And we're finally back on Madden 2005. Hello, welcome back to the very few that actually watch this. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I don't uh, pay attention to views all that much. I do enjoy doing this, and I'll do it for as long as I, uh, I think it will be relevant to. I, I plan on doing it at least until I, we win a Super Bowl. Then, I do have Madden 2008. I could always switch that if I feel like it. Because adjusting this one is a little bit awkward because the radio show, I can't turn it off. I can't lower its volume. I can't, like, mute it at all. It's not part... Because I, I have the music muted, but this doesn't... The radio show doesn't qualify along the music. Don't get me wrong. I love the radio show. It's a great addition to the game. I just wish I could mute it for the recording. Because otherwise he's talking over me and things are distracting and, you know, he still plays music with it, which is copyright. So, anyway, we're in the wild card. We ended up 11-5 and five and somehow only made the wild card. That's because the Redskins, Ravens, Packers, and Patriots were all slightly better. Redskins were 13-3. and three. They ended up, I, I think we beat them last time. But they ended up going from seven and zero to thirteen and three, so they went six and three since we, uh, no, six and two since we beat them. I think we also had the Patriots at fourteen and two. Shout out to Tom Brady who just recently retired, and I think the uh, the Super Bowl is the uh, on the night of this releasing. So if you want to know my predictions or opinions or anything like that. I know I released a video quite a few weeks ago that I predicted the Bills and the Packers being in the Super Bowl. And for the Packers, I was dead wrong because they were one and done. Bills looked really good. Unfortunately, they had to go up against the, the Chiefs. Now, uh, the, the Broncos are my second team, so I am not a big fan of the Chiefs. I personally think Mahomes is overrated as a quarterback. He's considered the modern GOAT. After only winning one Super Bowl, I mean, yay. But I do think he's overrated. I think his talent is a little bit overblown due to the fact that he has such an amazing offense. And I know their offense has struggled at times. But the, he, keep in mind, he has a... He has arguably a number one tight end in Travis Kelsey. And... Uh, very hard to cover, arguably number one wide receiver. I already forgot his name. <laughs> I I'm sorry, that guy is just... He's been irrelevant since that whole controversy about him came out. Years and years ago. I don't bother really remembering his name. I think... People who do that is just scum. So to me, he's just scum and I would not want him on my team I don't care how fast he is I don't care if he's, if he's Usain Bolt or whatever Or yeah I'd rather have someone like Chris Godwin or something like that someone who's actually younger and will probably be a better receiver for a lot longer than whatever his name is but nevertheless the Bengals are phasing off against the Rams in the Super Bowl on the night that this video is uploaded, I think. And I'm currently recording this on February 3rd. And also, um, my birthday is on February 9th. So, depending on whenever this airs, there you go. <laughs> wait, no. They usually wait a week. So, I think it's actually going to be on the 13th. And not the, um, so, whenever the Super Bowl is, the 6th or the 13th, I think it's the 13th, because they, after the championship games, they usually wait a week. So, I like the Bengals because they're one of my teams as well that I root for. I root for them since they've been bad with Carson Palmer, so... Uh, I, so I am rooting for the Bengals to win. I, I love Joe Burrow. He's my ideal quarterback, a pocket guy that has mobility, has poise, calmness, leadership, all that. He's my ideal quarterback. None of these scramblers or complete statues, because 
Burrow is not a complete statue. He has mobility. He doesn't have that great of an offensive line. He got sacked, sacked a record amount of times against, was it the Raiders? Yeah, I think it was the Raiders, and still won. So, I'm rooting for Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Uh, the Rams, if they don't win the Super Bowl, that's a failed season for them because they went all in with all these contracts going on with the Super Bowl. And if they don't win the Super Bowl, then <laughs> they're not going to win it because they have a lot of free agents coming off. I think Odell Beckham Jr. is one of them. Uh, they won't be able to bring everybody back. I don't think so, unless they put everyone on like a discounted contract. I don't think many of them would want to do that. So, if the Rams don't win, it's bust. It's winner bust for the Rams, and I'm hoping it's a bust because I want the Bengals to win. So, anyway, here we are. We have the Bengals and Chargers. Oddly enough, I was just talking about them. Seahawks and Rams, another team I was talking about back when they were in St. Louis. Pittsburgh Steelers against the Colts. Those are always a good one. And this also has historical value to it. The Eagles versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Odd how that works, isn't it? There's another thing I want to show you. Our quarterback. 21-year-old, 6 foot, 192. Nice weight. Darnay Green. Pro Bowl rookie with numbers that in today's standard are not really considered Pro Bowl worthy, at least in my opinion, an 82 passer rating, 3,262 yards, 22 touchdowns, 13 interceptions with a 57% completion percentage, with Andy Hall having a 72 percentage with two touchdowns, no interceptions. So Green must have gotten temporary hurt a couple times, or just one time. Sacked 47 times, though. I read to 203 yards per game. That's pretty good. So, yeah, Andy Green's actually... Uh, not Andy Green. Darnay Green is looking pretty good for a number 11. Let's hope he can keep it up. Being a Pro Bowl rookie, that's always a fantastic accomplishment. Uh, Why did I do that? I wanted to look at the other ones. Rushing, we have Bulk Holter, who's unfortunately injured for a week with seven touchdowns, and Westbrook with seven touchdowns. Bulk Holter with more yards, though, so maybe Westbrook got hurt for a little bit. Uh, both had two fumbles. Bulk Holter was only four broken tackles. Did he start or something? Uh, receiving, Owens, 57 receptions, 53. Uh, did I have a rookie receiver? Uh, I had a rookie tight end. Oh, and he had five catches for 52 yards, no touchdowns. I think I did, but I think I had him on kick returning? I forget. Anyway, five touchdowns, four, two, three. All right. Blocking uh, defense. Donnie Jones with 113 tackles, with Wayne with 104 tackles, both with nine sacks. Jones with an interception, Dawkins with three interceptions. Uh, Matt Ware also with three interceptions. Uh, what are my rookies here? We got a couple pro bowlers. There we go. Culberson, only seven tackles total. He had a pass deflection and a fumble and a fumble recovery with nine yards. No touchdown, though. Uh, Kurt Mitchell, four tackles, and that's it. Defensive tackle, Travis Duncan, two tackles, one of them being for loss. Uh, Seymour with one tackle, Madison with one tackle. Curtis Burt, a pro bowler? What? Is Wasn't he like the sixth or seventh round pick? Excuse me? He's a pro bowl kick returner, apparently. Defensive, he had one tackle. Interesting. Kick return, 22.7 uh, average, 55 kick returns, a total of 1,250 yards, two touchdowns with a 98 long. Okay. I I guess I, uh, you know, 
did pretty good with that pickup. All right, then. You can call it luck, or you can call it, like, actual scouting skill. I mean, I don't care. I'll call it skill. <laughs> All right. That's going to be it for uh, showcasing. Team overall did pretty well. And uh, I had a 7th round pick that made the Pro Bowl via kick returning. So, I have my kick returner of the future, for sure. And even though he wasn't the best overall kick returner, he improved. So, I think we're going to be heading into the game. Hope you all enjoyed. I don't think I'm going to end up being uh, commentary at all. Because I just have so many things going on. I don't... I'm trying to multitask a little bit. So, uh... Plus, I, I, I don't like the sound of my own voice, so I assume others don't really like the sound of my own voice, so I'm pretty sure you guys would just like the gameplay instead of just me talking over every single thing that says, I mean, or does, or see, I don't English well. You don't want to hear that for, what, an hour and a half over two hours? So, actually, I would probably more cut it down to because it would be easier. I'm rambling. I'll see you after the game. Our telecast is coming to you live from Tampa, Florida. Welcome to this Sunday night game. We expect a good one as Tampa Bay squares off against Philadelphia. We're here for another great game. Welcome to the action. I'm Al Michaels, my partner, John Madden. Boy, you talk about a quarterback who can light up the scoreboard. This guy can do it all. And the scary thing is, he's getting better with each game. I think some of that has to do with his receivers because he's got some good ones to throw to. T.O. will be his go-to guy once again and for obvious reasons. He's one of the better route runners and always seems to make the catch in traffic. Stopping this combo hasn't been easy for many defenses, so we'll have to see what type of coverages they go with to prevent these two from doing a lot of damage. Now this is what you call excitement. Look at those guys down there. They can't even stand still. The playoffs are here, and we're ready to get this NFC wildcard game underway. <laughs> the Buccaneers are set to kick it deep. Booming kick downfield. So we have first and ten here. Westbrook, the lone setback. Westbrook records the tackle at the 21. Then run didn't get them much. Yeah, there was a defender in every gap ready to make the tackle on that play. It's second down and eight to go. They come out of the nickel. Looking for a receiver with the pass. Incomplete pass. Looking for something downfield. Nothing was there, though, and it's third down now. Well, John, it's wild card weekend, and I wouldn't be surprised to see at least one big upset. You know, there's two different mentalities in these games. The guys who just barely made it in are just excited to be here, and they're playing loose. But the higher-seeded teams sometimes look beyond this week and see who they'll have to play in the divisional game. And that can lead to some big upset. Darn records the stop at the 37-yard line. Watch it here. This is a great call on third down to keep this drive alive. They were in a tough spot here. But this is a heck of a throw and catch to pick up that first down. Quarrel 
stops him for negative yardage. And he chases him down behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. I'll tell you, he's one of the most knowledgeable defenders in the league. He knows how to play the game, and he always knows what's going on. Second and long. Westbrook lines up behind his fullback in the eye. A little juke there. Barber makes the tackle at the 41. Six-yard game. And this is the sixth play of this drive. They need six. The Buccaneers come out in a dive package. Westbrook. They'll go with a play fake. With the throw. Incomplete pass. Short pass off the mark, and it's now fourth down. Johnson is ready to pump this one away. Here's the kick. From the 16. They're ready to call their first play of the game. So they have first and ten here. The Eagles come out in a nickel package. He'll pass on first down. Great play in the backfield by Jones. Great effort that time, John. He's clearly one of the best in the league. Yeah, he's one of those guys who's been playing for a while now. And let me tell you, he might never be better than he is right now. Now they're looking at second and long after the sack. The Eagles come out in a nickel package. Throws it over the middle. And it's caught. Shepard makes the tackle at the 36-yard line. Good read finding the single coverage in the secondary. First and ten. Chip alone setback. Pressure throws it. This one falls incomplete, and that brings up second down. Chip the long back with the pass, and this pass is complete. Nice read, finding the receiver who is in single coverage. And this is the fifth play of this drive. The ball is right at midfield. They'll go from the I formation. On the carry. Yeah, couldn't pick up any blocking on that play. The defense is always very aggressive when defending the run. They're extremely disciplined. And they get off their blocks very quickly. Makes it tough to find openings when you're running the ball. Sixth play of this drive. Ball right around midfield. Cover. The Eagles come out of a nickel package. Rowing. Perfect throw. Brown brings him down at the 32-yard line. It's three times in this drive they've been able to pick up a first down. Yeah, and the thing is, they'll be doing more than just picking up first downs if this success continues. They're going to be picking up some points. So they have first and ten here. Come on now. Let's Chip, the deep man, on the call. Trotter pulls him down at the 31. Chip was dragged down before he could get to the line of scrimmage. They have great size and quickness up front. That allows them to hold up against the run while also giving them the speed to rush the passer when they drop back the pass. Chip. Play action with the throw. And it's caught. Brown with the stop at the 22-yard line. Sure, Vicious didn't have much room to do anything with that ball. Yeah, they had the coverage, and they made the sure play instead of trying something fancy like going for the pick. Hey! 
first down marker is just inside the 22. Eight defenders in the box on this one. Closing in. Flings it to the outside. He was really hit hard on that play. Yeah, you talk about your decleaner. That's what happened there. He unloaded and he got a depleter. Dramatica comes in to attempt a field goal, which would give them their first score of the day. And it's up. No doubt about that one. As we take a look at his success returning kicks, we get ready for the kickoff. Two bucks are lined up for the kickoff. It's on its way. From the 10 yard line. They're just about ready to get this drive started after being forced to punt on their last possession. It's first and ten. Westbrook lines up behind his fullback in the eye. Aims it off. Dropped in the backfield. Big tackle there for Lawson. Great pursuit there, John. You can say that again. He knows how to prepare. And it really pays off when you make stops like that. Ball on their own 22. The defense lines up in the nickel. Pressure coming. Looking downfield. Throws it. Great field. We give him time to find a receiver. Yeah, well, this guy, he doesn't throw it behind them. He doesn't throw it over their head. He throws it where they're going. So they have first and ten here. The quarterback lines up with two backs behind him. First play to the right. Drop behind the line for a loss of a couple. Trying to bounce it outside, but there was nothing available. They didn't fool anybody with that play call. The defense knew what was coming, and they shut that thing down quickly. Second and long. Base, base. Westbrook, the lone back. He's brought down behind the line for a short pass. Across the middle, but was turned away. They have two pretty good run stoppers in the middle of that line. And they can cross some plays like that. And they'll face a long third down here. Only one man back. With the throw, the defense has it. Excellent man-to-man -man coverage on that play as he comes away with the takeaway. So after the interception now, it's first and ten. The Eagles come out in the 46 with the pass. Nearly intercepted. Almost a big turnover. One thing remains constant. No matter what kind of quarterback you are, rushing your throws is going to end up in incompletion or worse. Under pressure, gets the pass off, and the pass was incomplete. He was lucky to get that one off. The defense was all over him. That's the best way to do it. As a defense, you never want the quarterback to be able to settle in and feel comfortable in the pocket. Bringing guys in the blitz or playing bump and run on the outside can really disrupt the play's execution. Garner, the lone setback. 
with the pass. And he hits his target. Where? Makes the stop at the 37-yard line. Watch it here. This is a great call on third down to keep this drive alive. They were in a tough spot here. But this is a heck of a throw and catch to pick up that first down. relentless when the offense decides to run the ball. They break down blocks very quickly. And they do a good job maintaining their gap assignments, limiting cutback opportunity. It's second down and 10 to go. The Buccaneers line up in a five receiver set this time. Pressure gets rid of it. It's caught. Try makes the tackle at the 28 yard line. Douglas makes a catch but doesn't get very far. And that's what the mark of a solid defense is. They close in on you in a hurry and they don't miss tackle. Ball on the 28 yard line. Only one man in the backfield. Chip. Play action. Throws it. And this pass is completed. They convert to the first down on that throw. And they ran the perfect play to get those couple of yards. And this is the seventh play of this drive. Inside enemy territory. Going to the air on first down. Dunks it left side. And it's complete. They get another first down here. Well, they're not doing anything fancy. But good old-fashioned drop back to pass. And it's working. Four more yards to the end zone. Let's go! Check two! Check two! Come on, let's go! Buzzes it left. Still running. Check is in there for the score. Now watch, this is the thing. He looks like one of those downhill runners. He shows some power. The power gets him right into the end zone. way and the extra point is good Should be returnable. From the six. Can't bring him down. Ready now for the first play of the drive. And the defense will be looking for another pick. Ball on their own 30. They line up in the I formation. Dropping back, closing in, throwing short to the right side. And it's complete. Phillip records the stop at the 36. Looks like he's just shaken up, and we'll get the full report from Jill very shortly. Second and three coming up here. The Buccaneers come out in a dime package. Gets the pass off. Barber is the guy who was there to bring him down at the 48-yard line. We give him some time to hit his man. And the thing is, he doesn't care how big that window is. With his accuracy, everyone's open. It's first and ten. Pressure coming. So they'll lose yardage on that tackle by Rice. 
Right. Drags him down behind the line. Great play from the defensive line. He's such a disruptive force against the pass, whether he's coming after the quarterback or knocking the ball out of the air. Now in second and long after the sack. The Bucks come out in a nickel package. Under pressure, gets rid of it. Incomplete. And the quarterback is able to tip it away from the intended receiver. He's got a good sense of knowing where the ball will come down and when to make his move. And this is the fifth play of this drive. Is it right? Incomplete pass. Green. Here right to feel the pressure there. Yeah, and that's something the defensive coordinator mentioned in practice this week. Making the quarterback throw the ball before he's ready to throw it. Johnson will come in now to punt it away. Smith sets up to run back the punt. Here's the punt. And so the punt goes out of bounds. First and ten. Get ready. Get ready. Set. Come on. Chip. Great fake. Rowing. Almost intercepted. Almost, almost a big turnover. That's the thing. That was a perfect opportunity to make a big play for his defense. And he lets it go as an incomplete pass rather than an interception. Base, base. The Eagles got the 46. Gets rid of it. And it's caught. Dawkins makes the tackle at the 35. Perfect pass. Great catch. And that'll move the chain. It's first and ten. Chip the long ball. Being brought to the back. Chip couldn't escape the pursuit and it was cut down quickly. These guys up front are very tough to block because they can use their size and strength to get excellent leverage on running play. Sometimes they struggle a little with their consistency, but they always seem to be a big factor when the game's on the line. The Buccaneers line up in a five receiver set this time. They can't draw it up any better than that textbook first down. And this is the fifth play of this drive. Ball at about midfield. He's going to feel that in the morning. Excellent gain on first down. These guys are just out there playing a little pitch and catch. They make it look easy. They have to get the ball inside the 42 to convert. The Eagles come out in a dime package. Pressure with the pass. Incomplete. Plenty of pressure, and he barely gets the pace away. They did a nice job up front with their bull rushes and rips and stunts, forcing adjustments along the offensive line. They have to do a better job getting off the ball and controlling the line of scrimmage. But they're going to have a tough time whenever they drop back to throw. The Eagles guys in the box. Chip. Blue pulls him down at the 35-yard line. And that game will get them a fresh set of downs. He just exploded towards the marker that time. That was a big-time run. Tampa Bay has jumped out to an early lead as the first quarter comes to a close with a score 10-0. The teams have switched sides and will start the second quarter. 
First and ten. Get in there. Yeah. Come out of the nickel. With the pass, he couldn't control it. If his team wants to make the next round, he's going to have to make that catch. Ninth play of this drive. Chip, the lone setback. Collins sends a man in motion. Came up to the tailback. Brown is the guy who's here to bring him down at the 31. And they're trying to force the defense to adjust to them. If they keep getting gains like this, it could really open up things for them in the second half. Third down here as they try to get it inside the 25-yard line to convert. The Eagles come out in a nickel pack. Gets the pass off, and he hits his target. He just unloaded on it. Boom. Now that is what football's all about. The fullback was on the receiving end. And he's a good option coming out of the backfield. He can do a lot more than just block. He can catch it out of the backfield, carry it, and heck, I haven't even seen him throw it once or twice. That's a blue leg. Only one man in the back here. Crosses it out to the left. Buckin pulls him down at the 20 yard line. No she way. couldn't find any room on that one. They really hustle on the defensive side of the ball. They're very good at clogging up the line, limiting the number of holes and cutback lines that the back has to choose from. The Eagles come out with eight guys in the box. Uh, looking for Rome. He's brought down behind the line for a short ball. Chip didn't get any help from his offensive line. It was just about impossible to run when you have guys in the backfield just as soon as you snap the ball. And this is the 13th play of this drive. Inside enemy territory. Garner, the lone back. Quick pass. Behind him, and he has it. Brown hammers it at the 18-yard line. Martin Gramatic lines up for about a 36-yard field goal attempt. The kick is up. Dramatic. Bangs it right through and adds another three to their total. Number 80. He's back for the kickoff as we take a quick glance at his return numbers. The Buccaneers were set to kick it deep. And he got all of that one. A great kick. From the two. Philadelphia needs two scores to get back into this one. So they have first and ten here. Come out in a nickel pack. Gives the ball off. McFarland makes the tackle at the 21. And now our viewers can see how successful each team's main running threat has been today. About eight yards. The Buccaneers come out of a nickel pack. Stop behind the line, loss of the cup. Right gets to him in a hurry. He really overpowered the blocker that time. He's a big, big, strong man. It's now third and long after the sound. The Bucks come out of a nickel pack. Closing in. Fast. He couldn't control it. Things that can't secure the ball, and that'll bring up fourth down. You know, executing on third down is essential to winning ball games. When you drop ones like that, I'll tell you, it just kills you. Especially when you're the best receiver. 
Johnson will come into this game to punt. Here's the punt. This one goes out of bounds. So they have first and ten here. Clayton, the man in motion. They give it to the halfback. Shit, wasn't able to get anything going on that play. They got there and shut that play down very quickly. That's just a case of studying game film this week paying off. When you know what they like to run in certain situations, you can anticipate the play call and stop the play before it even gets started. The Eagles come out with eight guys in the box. Rowing. And he's pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Collins floated it out there, and the receiver was able to bring it in. And that's a typical timing pass where you lead the receiver to a spot. And when he gets there, he just needs to make the catch. Here's a third and long situation. These third downs haven't been much of an obstacle, and it's helped them take the lead. Fourth down now after the incomplete pass. So three and out, and they'll line up to punt. Here's the kick. And he chooses not to return this one. First and ten. Base, base. And run, and run. The quarterback gets set with only one back behind him. Two. Two. To the left. Quarrel makes the play at the 16-yard line. Now let's have a look at what our runners have done up to this point. Seven yards to go. With the carry. Right with the tackle at the 19-yard line. He was fortunate to get anything on that play. And that's a tribute to their strength and conditioning coach. These guys spend almost as much time in the weight room as they do on the field. And you see it pay off when a guy can turn a play that looks like a sure loss into a play for a couple of yards. Buster, the long second. They give it to the halfback. Right, stops him at the 20. They ran it there. Yep, that's an important part of this team's offense. Nothing happening for the offense. They're forced into a three and out. Here's the punt. From the 49. He picks up a few yards on the return. First and ten. The Eagles come out with eight guys in the box. Throwing up first down. Throwing short to the right side. Jump gets right in there and brings him down. They dumped it off on the screen on that play. That one didn't surprise the defense. They were right there to tackle the ball carrier. That first down marker just inside the 35. The bats are lined up in an eye. Hands it off. Dawkins makes the stop at the 41. Good solid run there. That's exactly what they will be looking for all day long on the ground. The best backs in the league average four to five yards a carry. And you know, that's the kind of production that every coach is looking for. But there are a lot of things that go into a successful running game. you got to have good play calling, good blocking up front, and a back that can take advantage when he sees the opening. Rowan makes the adjustment. 
Brown brings him down at the 30. Nice ball going to the air, and that'll move the chain. It's first and ten. The Eagles come out of the 46. Well, that came off. Dives and makes the tackle. We're going to keep testing this rushing defense. The guy seems to get stronger every time he touches a ball. They have to get the ball inside the 20 to convert. The Eagles come out with eight guys in the box. Again, the run. Wayne is the guy who's there to bring him down. At the 22, he might have gotten a yard or two. That guy got knocked around by that defense. He needs a little protection from his lineman. They have to get the ball inside the 20 to convert. The defense has had difficulty stopping them on third down. This one is handed off. Fakes the handoff. Rolling. Incomplete. Lewis did a great defensive play, tipping the pass. He needs to do a better job putting the pass on the spot where only his guy can get it. Those tip passes can turn into interceptions pretty easily. Martin Grammatical ends up to attempt what will be about a 40-yard field goal. And it's up. The veteran kicks it through. No problem for him. Whatever the situation, he'll approach it the same way. Cool and smooth. Number 80 gets set to return the kickoff as we take a look at his stats. Bucks are lined up for the kickoff. Should be a return here. From the eight. To the 20. Nothing happened to the offense on their last drive as they went three and out. It's first and ten. With the tackle at the 37 yard line. Nine yard game. One yard to go. They line up in the I formation. Throws out to the left. Incomplete pass. John, he rushed that throw. Any way you look at it, an incomplete pass is a heck of a lot better and throwing it to the other guy. Nickelback in this country. Westbrook couldn't even get out of the backfield. This defense is extremely active and effective up front. They do a good job of getting upfield quickly, creating havoc in the backfield. Misdirection plays and draws can be a good way to use their speed and aggressiveness against them. Unable to get anything going on that series, they'll have to punt it away here. Here's the kick. He's waving for the fair catch. 32 yard punt. Fair catch made at the 29 yard line. It's first and ten. The Eagles reset. Pushes it out to the left. Brown with the stop at the 29. So after that run, we can see how the two main threats on the ground have fared so far. So it's second and ten. The Eagles come out in a nickel package. Throws it. He hits his receiver. Big hit on the ball. Here. When you talk about getting unloaded on, that's what happened here. He just got unloaded on. Right. 
third and maybe one. Big stop, big stop. Here we go, here we go, we gotta get him. Short, short. They're looking for the run with all those linebackers out there. Toss to the left. Blue gets right in there and brings him down. Trying to take the time off the clock with the lead. What do you think, John? Are you a little too conservative here? Or maybe you want to give the other team as little time as possible. They're pretty comfortable running it, and falling short of the first isn't a big deal because you keep the clock moving. Good defensive stand there. Now they'll punt it away after a three and out. Here's the punt. And he waves for the fair catch. 37 yard line. Almost at the two minute mark now. The quarterback gets set with only one back behind him. Starts out the wrong way and winds up losing yards. Yeah, they got good penetration on the line. Guys flying to the ball, getting to the ball carrier, making a heck of a defensive play. Two minute warning coming up. It's the ball! Come on! Westbrook keeps his feet moving. Brooks makes the stop at the 26. So let's take a look at how this back compares to the opposition. Almost at the two-minute mark now. And we've reached the two-minute mark. The quarterback lines up with two options behind him. Pressure coming, throwing. Incomplete pass. Fourth down now. We have to connect on the pass. So the punt team gets ready as we near halftime. So they'll line up the punt after going three and out. Here's the kick. Fair catch. 40 hey, this is why you run those two-minute drills in practice for a situation like this. The only difference is this isn't the scout team defense. Looks like he's calling an audible. The Eagles line up in the quarter defense. Gets rid of it. Great throw. And he slips out of bounds at the 38. You talk about great concentration. Watch it. He's able to keep his feet in bounds and make the catch on a perfectly placed pass. I'm sure they'll be going to the air as long as they have the ball. Empty, empty. Bring it! Bring it! Rowling. The pass is picked off. There he goes. The 30, the 20. The 10. Jeremiah Trotter is in there for the score. Comes in for the extra point. And it's on its way. The point after is good. The Eagles are ready to kick this one off. Nice kick. Plenty of distance. 
from the four-yard line to the 20. The defensive unit forced an interception the last time they were on the field. One thing they want to avoid is turning it over and setting up the other guys with a chance to get some points. It's first and ten. on first down with the pass behind him but he has it Collins done the pass to his receiver yeah great job of holding on to him but that steam coming off him Slings it to the outside. They dropped additional people into the secondary, but still generated an excellent pass rush. And that gives you a lot of flexibility calling your defense. If the guys up front are good at creating pressure, then you don't have to blitz as often, giving you the ability to double cover an opponent's best receiver. The defense can't afford to take too many gambles by going for a pick when they should just try and knock it down. One mistake can lead to a big play for the offense. Good pass rush, John, as they try to disrupt the timing. And you should credit the defensive line. They do a nice job tying up the blockers and can bring pressure up the middle. When you combine their play with the fact that the defensive coordinator likes to bring additional glitches from the outside, it can make for a very long day for the quarterback. Under pressure, passes left. Caught. Excellent recognition by the receiver, reading the coverage and adjusting his route accordingly. Option routes are receiving routes designed to take advantage of the coverage. It's up to both the receiver and the quarterback to make the same read. If the receiver reads zone, but the quarterback reads man, you can see passes going right to defender. They'd like to add a few more points to this lead, but we'll need to do a good job with clock management. First and ten. Chip is the deep back. Dropping back. Pressure. Throws it. This pass is incomplete. It looks to be all right, though. He'll come out at least for a play or two. And Jill will fill us in in a moment. Looking to pick up a first and moving down the field. Still a chance for them to increase their lead. Sixth play of this drive. Eagles come out with eight guys in the box. Throws over to his right. Wayne records the tackle at the 40. Dudley makes the catch. Goes for about three yards. That'll bring up third down. Third down play upcoming to convert. They have to get it to the 32. They've executed very well on third down so far, and that's a big reason why they're ahead at the moment. With the throw, and he hits his target. Brown stops it at the 34-yard line. Four field goals in the game. This kick goes out of bounds, and it looks like there's a penalty on the play. Well, they tried the directional kick, but it goes out of bounds. The return team is going to have good position after that one, and they didn't even have to worry about running it back. One thing as a defender you want to avoid is trying to take a gamble for a turnover and then giving up a big play that lets them get points before the half. Throwing. Hits the fullback with a short pass to the right side. Caught the pass, but didn't go anywhere. Nope. They were on him like glue. Six. 
Second and long coming up here. Go, go, go. Green using split back. Throwing short to his left. Dumps it out to the left. Here's an opening. Missed tackle. We'll feel that one tomorrow. Yeah, with how hard he just got hit, he's lucky to be able to hold on to the ball. Gets rid of it. He finds his man. Brooks is the guy who's there to bring him down at the 40. That was a good adjustment by the receiver as he reads the man coverage and finds open space. The thing with these option routes is everyone has to make their read quickly and make their adjustments quickly. Running option routes and running them effectively takes a lot of repetition and practice. Throwing on first down. Throwing. He hits his receiver. Phillip makes the tackle at the 25. The end of the second quarter with the score. Tampa Bay, 19. Philadelphia, 7. We're ready to start the second half of play. So we'll get ready to go here in the second half. Not a bad kick. They'll set up for the return. From the four. Tampa Bay already leading in this one. Sends their offensive unit back onto the field. It's first and ten. Okay, here we go. The Buccaneers have not been very successful throwing on first down, but they still have the lead. Yeah, somehow they've managed to overcome that problem. Jones makes the tackle at the 23. Not much on that play. Yeah, and that's what happens when you talk about a disciplined defense. They stay at home and wait for the runner to come to them. They need seven. Let's go, let's go. Eight defenders in the box on this one. Hand it off. The 30. Dawkins takes him down at the 34-yard line. Jet covered some good ground there. Hey, nice job up front. Holding their block and allowing him to get a good run for a first down. So they have first and ten here. Can't get it done on the ground on first down, John, but they're still leading it. Running is important, but they've got other weapons that can get them in the end zone. So the pass, but didn't go anywhere. Yeah, the defense is real good at putting a quick end to completion. It's second down and three to go. They're looking for the run with all those linebackers out there. And he makes the grab. That pass didn't have much behind it. It wasn't pretty, but when you look at the statistics, it's not how pretty it was. It's how many first downs you pick up. First and ten. Despite very little success running on first down, they still lead. Some teams manage to get by pretty well without a solid running game. That's mostly because their passing game is very effective, especially their short passing game. He was trying to make something happen by himself and puts it on the ground. They're having no success running on first down. Stuff like a turkey. I mean, less than two yards isn't very good. Rolling. And this pass is complete. Green completes the pass with pickup about seven yards. On the play. Up 
They'll have to get the ball inside the 37 in order to convert. The Eagles come out in the bunch early. Schmidt stops him at the 40-yard line. Westbrook didn't have much to work with on that running play. That's because the defense did a good job anticipating the snap count. With an aggressive defense like this, a hard count could be an effective way to keep him off balance while trying to draw him off sides. The Bucks come out in a nickel pack. On the round. Great fake. Gets the pass off at the 30. And he just got level. Yeah, you know that whole deal about what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? Well, the unstoppable force won that one. It's first and ten. Rushing on first down has not worked out for them today. Less than a two-yard of a carry average. That's why they're losing. You've got to be able to get yards on first down. Gain of seven. Fifth play of this drive. And they find themselves in scoring range. to get some points on this drive and are in a good position now to do that as they're in the red zone. We'll get the ball again. Dives and brings him down. And the 19. But he couldn't find an opening and was brought down very quickly. Yeah, he was. This line has to do a better job of holding up at the point of attack. He has a fast first step. He can explode through the hole. And he needs a line to create that little crease or cutback lane to break free. Westbrook in the backfield. With the carry, play action. Flings it to the outside. Goal with the stop. And the 16-yard line. David Akers comes out to attempt what will be a 34-yard field goal. And it's up. Boy, he really got into that one easily, clearing the crossbar. The Eagles are set to kick it deep. He got all of that one. From the two-yard line. To the 20. Tampa Bay is looking to extend its advantage as they take over again offensively. So they have first and 10 here. They'll go from the I formation. Throwing up first down. Throwing. This pass is incomplete. Wayne got up and knocked that pass away. He has a great feel for defending the pass. And he always seems to be in great position to make a play in the ball. Drops back, gets a big pass. Pass ball's incomplete. Dawkins gets to him just as the ball arrives, and he knocks it loose. He played that well. You know, it looked like he knew exactly where that route was going. The Eagles come out in a dime packet. Closing in with the pass. This one falls incomplete. He has yet to complete a pass on this drive. As a coach, if you see your quarterback struggling, you have to call a play that is best suited for him. I don't think they're doing that. Bidwell is back to punt. Here's the punt. He signals for a fair catch. Hey, 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 
So they have first and ten here. They're having no success running on first down. Which is one reason why they find themselves on the short end of the stick right now. It's hard to have consistent success without balance. They went with the running play. You never know when you're going to find some room and break loose into the secondary. They need seven. Green with split backs. He gets the carry. Gets rid of it. And he hits his car. Barber records the stop at the 48-yard line. Owen is doing a good job finding the open area in the coverage. And that's his third catch. It's third down and a yard. The offense has had trouble moving the sticks on third down so far. And he's tackled behind the line. You know, Johnny always seems to be in perfect position to make a play. He's all about effort. His motor's always running at 100%, and he's got the experience to diagnose plays very quickly. Nothing happening on that drive, and they'll punt it away. Here's the kick. From the 17-yard line. Flag down. First and 10. Stay home. Stay home. The bats are lined up in an eye. Play. Wayne got very good penetration there. They wind up in reverse. That's a good push in the middle of the line. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you are. If the defense gets that much penetration, you're going to go backwards. Second and long coming up here. The Eagles come out on a nickel package. Dudley moves in motion. Throws it. Pass was incomplete. Good job getting there, but he couldn't bring it in for the catch. Sometimes you see the receivers drop the easiest passes. They must be thinking touchdown before making the catch. The lineup of six defensive backs. Garner setting up play action. Rowing. He hits his receiver. Shepard pulls him down at the 30. This is a great block. Watch here. He just barrels into the defender, taking him right off the turf. Now that is a textbook block right there. Right. Collins sends a man in motion. The play up in the backfield. So he does a good job to get it on the play and records his eighth tackle. Very little blocking to work with on that play. Yeah, that's just great play from the defense. They play with great leverage up front and always seem to get penetration. When you have defenders in the backfield, it makes it very difficult to run or pass. The Eagles come out with eight guys in the box. Once again, Dawkins makes the stop at the 34. Pickup of about seven. Sixth play of this drive. They need five. They've done very well on third down to this point. Drops back. Pressure coming. Throws on the run. And he makes the grab. Collins has a few more to his total with that completion. And now it's thrown for over 250. It's first and ten. The defense lines up in the nickel. He'll pass on first down. Looking for a receiver. Throwing. 
can't hang on. Now he helped get his team this far. And the next pass they throw to him, he's going to have to catch it. And this is the eighth play of this drive. The Eagles come out with eight guys in the box. Gets the pass off. He finds his man. Collins with a three-yard completion. That'll bring up third down. Third and seven coming up here. They'll come out of the nickel. Garner. Play action. Slings it across the middle. Lewis stops him at the 44-yard line. Now fires complete, and it's good for a first down. He made a great read at the line. He knew he'd have to get it out of there fast, and he did. Ball on the 44-yard line. The defense lines up in the next one. Tucks it away. Dawkins pulls him down at the 32-yard line. A game there and a first down. If the defense keeps giving up runs like that for first downs, they'll have to make some adjustments to slow this guy down. It's first and ten. Lost by the left. Brown makes the stop at the 31-yard line. The running game has not been able to get started today. They got to hope that the passing offense is ready to carry the load. First down marker is just inside the 22. This one is handed off. Great, great. With the pass, great throw. Shepard makes the tackle at the 16-yard line. This is their fifth first down on the drive. And one of the keys has been the performance of this offensive line. These guys have really handled the line of scrimmage, not only in the running game, but also in pass protection. They're looking for the run with all those linebackers out there. Gets the pass off. He hits his receiver. Good looking play there as they pick up the first down to keep the drive alive. Six more yards and they'll put up six. The quarterback gets set with only one back behind him. He gets the first created problems in the backfield on that. The offensive line didn't get much of a push on that play, and the runner is stuck. As soon as he got the ball, there was a defender in his face to knock him down. Nine yards will get them six points. The defense lines up in the nickel. Chip. Rose. Perfect throw. Jones with the tackle at the two-yard line. Collins will be facing a third down now after that pass next six. They need two yards to get it into the end zone. And we get a trip this one their ability to convert on third down. Well, the quarterback decided to keep it. The defense wasn't going to let the quarterback pick up the first down on that play. He got good penetration, and he had nowhere to go. Now this will be from about 20 yards out. The kick is up. He had plenty of room to spare. It's on its way. From the 11-yard line. 
This team is going to have to focus a lot more than they did in the first half if they're going to come back. First and ten. The Buccaneers come out in a nickel pack. The carry it. Goal records the stop at the 23. Short gain on that burst through the middle, maybe half a yard. I don't think I'd call that run a burst. That was more of a limp up the middle. Second and nine coming up here. So we've reached the end of the third quarter with the Bucks ahead of the Eagles, 22-10. The Eagles have the ball and a two-touchdown deficit to overcome to start this final period. It's second down and nine to go. Westbrook, the long back. They're coming with the blitz. Gets rid of it. He hits his receiver. Quarrel with the tackle at the 31-yard line. Green delivered the pass right on time, John. And I love the way this guy throws the football. He has great touch and seems to always be putting it right there in the number. About a yard to go. Yeah, and you can't win if you can't convert third down. Rose, it's going the other way. That was one heck of a play by the defender. Sometimes the playoffs bring the best out of certain players. Maybe he's one of them. Following the interception, it's now first and ten. The Eagles come out with eight guys in the box. Throwing on first down. With the pass. And the catch is made. Collins with a good throw on that pass. Not only does he have a powerful arm, but he also has a quick release and accuracy to go along with it. So they have first and ten here. So with the ball in the red zone, they have a very good chance of extending that lead. Under pressure, goes with a short pass to the right side. Not much as he connects with him just out of the back. What he had to do there was hit his check down receiver. He wanted something in the end zone, but he had to settle for the check down. It's second down and nine to go. Lucky, lucky. The Eagles come out of the 46. Lewis gets right in there and brings him down. He found the ball carrier there again, and that's something we've seen plenty of in this game. They're not just going to give up on the run, no matter how ineffective it is. So on third down, they'll be looking to get it to the eight-yard line or further. Nice job so far on third down for the offense, and we'll see if that continues here. Hand it off. Breaks free of the defender. Walker makes the tackle at the seven-yard line. Garner with a nice run and picks up the first down. It was well executed. They hit their blocks, and the back found the right hole to get down the field and pick up a first down. They need seven yards for a touchdown. Chip setting up play action. Goes to the end zone. Despite good coverage, he forces the ball in there. The quarterback has all the tools to look for. He just needs to be a little more patient out there. Sixth play of this drive. The quarterback gets set with only one back behind him. One in the end zone. Pass falls incomplete. Jerevicious just had six points bounce off his hands. He ran the perfect route, but when it came time to catch the ball, imperfection set in. Seventh play of this drive. The Eagles come out in a nickel pack. Dropping back. Pressure. Throwing. 
with the adjustment. He has it. Lewis with the stop at the two. Five yard will be a 19-yard field goal attempt. And it's on its way. Plenty of distance on that one. Good kick. The Bucks are taking control in this one. The Buccaneers are ready to kick this one off. Good distance. From the five. The defensive unit forced an interception the last time they were on the field. First and ten. Come out on a nickel package. Win records the stop at the 20 yard line. Gain of about a yard. Nine yards to go. The Eagles come out with four wide receivers lined up tight. He couldn't come up with the interception. I'll tell you, he did almost everything right on that one. Able to read the quarterback's eyes. He got himself in good position to make the interception. But when it got to him, just bounced off his hand. He's throwing. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. They come out in a dime package. With the pass, ooh, nearly picked up. The defender got in between the ball and the receiver again. They play a very aggressive style of defense, so that'll happen a lot to an opposing offense. Now here's the punt unit as the defense forces a three and out. Here's the punt. First and ten. The Eagles come out on the 46. To carry it. Shepard takes him down. And to 48. Gain of two. Gain of two. The first down marker is just inside the 40. The Eagles come out with eight guys in the box. Throwing short to the right side. And he's pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Collins is a short gain on that pass, but maybe two yards. The first down marker is just inside the 40. Consistent success on third down, which they've had, usually translates into a win. Gets the pass off. Drops. Oh, no, no, no. Trying to convert no, no, no. through the air, but the pass was off the mark. Number 80 is back to receive this kick. Here's the kick. And he signals for the fair catch. So they have first and ten here. Westbrook. Drop behind the line. Westbrook couldn't get out of the backfield. That was just 
is the defensive line getting lower than the offensive line. When your defensive guys up front can control the line of scrimmage, it makes it very difficult to move the ball on offense. The Eagles line up with two backs behind the quarterback. He goes to the left side. And he's written down at the 25-yard line. Mitchell gets the reception. The seven-yard gain. It will be third down now upcoming. Third and five. The defense really bears down on third down. Drops back. Gets rid of it. Turns. He has it. Phillip is the only clear to bring him down. At the 49 yard line. Good throw. Good catch to move the chains. You know, as a receiver, all you have to do is get a step. And this guy's going to put the ball on you. So we have first and ten here. Westbrook, the deep man. Crossplay to the right. Quarrel makes the play at the 49. No the defensive line has been getting good penetration. They've done a great job of shutting down this running game. It's second down and 10 to go. Closing in, throwing. Right to him. Kelly makes the tackle at the 31. Green with a hot hand on this drive. And what he's doing is sitting back there in the pocket, seeing everything, making great decisions, and getting the ball to the right guy. He's playing very well right now. on that run through the middle. He's got to look to make his move earlier. If he sees guys waiting there in the middle, he's got to look for the cutback lane or bounce it out looking for a little more room to the outside. Using split back. Drops back. Pressure coming. Picked off. It's intercepted. I'll tell you, every time the playoffs roll around, we see some great defensive plays like that. Following the interception, it's now first and ten. The Eagles come out with eight guys in the box. Big pop that time. You want someone there to tell you to watch out because he just got down. Pulled down after a minimal game. They just manhandled him at the line of scrimmage. I always say that if you win the battle in the trenches, it's going to go a long way towards your winning the game. Shep is the deep back. Under pressure. The 40. Shepard with the stop at the 42-yard line. Perfect pass. Great catch. And that'll move the chain. So they have first and ten here. Raise a two. Raise a two. The Eagles come out in the 46. The 50. Dawkins makes the tackle at the 47. It's first and 10. They'll go from the I formation. Pass play here on first down. Pressure gets the pass off. Incomplete. He threw it a little too soon and it missed the mark. The pass rush almost got to him. I don't think he ever had a chance to set his feet. I'll tell you one thing. This defensive coach sure has his defensive lineman pumped up. And this is the fifth play of this drive. Chip, the deep back. Chip. Brown with the stop at the 44. Couldn't find much of a hole, and he's brought down after a gain of what looks like a couple. Yeah, you talk about push. This line got no push at all, and there was nowhere to go. 
They need seven. Stepping it up on third down all day. Wayne makes the play at the 39. Good game for the offense here in the second half. This is one of those guys who seems to play better as the game goes on. The more he gets the ball, the better he does. So I'd expect to see him get quite a few touches here as the game winds down. Number 80 lines up deep for the punt return. Here's the punt. And he chooses not to return this one. First and ten. The Eagles line up with two backs behind the quarterback. Slings it to the outside. Great pass. Brock makes the stop at the 20. He holds that pass in, and that's his fourth catch of the day. So it's second and ten. Using split back. Goes again. Gets the pass off. Barber records the tackle at the 36-yard line. That'll move the change, John. Yeah, when you put together a great pass with a heck of a catch, that's exactly what you're going to get. Almost at the two-minute mark now. The Buccaneers come out in a nickel package with the throw and this pass is complete good connection there this guy has great confidence in his arm he knows that he can make the completion regardless of the coverage two minutes to the final gun Come out in a nickel pack. Dropping back. Throws it. This pass is incomplete. It's tipped away by the cornerback. That's a good job of reading and timing the play so the receiver can't make the catch. They're going to make the quarterback keep throwing because it's the only way that they have a shot at coming back. Westbrook, the lone back. Rowing. And the catch is made. Smith makes the stop at the 18. Changing the play now. Rosen powering it. With the adjustment, he has it. Smith makes the catch, but for a short gain, they get three yards. Looks like they'll go with a hurry up here. Dropping back. With the throw. And he makes the touchdown. He's in there for the touchdown. They're trying to make it a seven-point spread as they go for the deuce. conversion attempt. Yeah, it's always a gamble with these two-point tries. The league success rate is always low. The onside kick is really their only option here as they look for a good bounce. Here we go. They don't get it. So after being forced to punt the last time they had it, the offense heads back out onto the field. 
This one is just about in the book. So they have first and ten here. The Eagles about eight guys in the box. Lewis pulls him down at the 36. Gain of seven. So they need about three here. The Eagles got a shot. This one is handed off. Didn't get much. I'm guessing this should be a run. The defense can't be lollygagging around, because if they are and they give up a first, this one's over. They have to reach the 33 to convert. Dudley comes in motion. They get the carry. Strata with the stop at the 33-yard line. And that game will get them a fresh set of downs. He really ran well there. He gets some great blocks, and he has patience as he picks up the first down. So the defense can use its last time out here after first down, but two kneel downs will close this game out. So they'll just wind the clock down and get out of here with a win. He'll just take a knee. No Philadelphia calls a timeout. They have none left. And a kneel down here on second down is the most likely scenario. Second and long coming up here. They're looking for the run with all those linebackers out there. And there's the kneel down by the quarterback. to get to the 23 to convert for the first. Looks like they'll take a knee right here and save the victory. This game is presented by the authority of the National Football League and EA Sports. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written permission of EA Sports is prohibited. This is Al Michaels. Good night. Okay, that was not a good performance at all by Darnay. One touchdown, three interceptions. He didn't get a passing touchdown until the very last moment. I mean, he that last drive he had, he looked pretty good. I mean, I understand why he couldn't play like that the rest of the game. Uh, defense gave us a lot of opportunities. I mean, player of the game was our middle linebacker. Um, I think I want to focus on new coaches, especially a new offensive coach, maybe a new head coach if there's one – that I like there. The best head coach I ever had was uh, uh, Peyton Manning, to be honest. Peyton Manning retired, became a head coaching candidate. I hired him as a head coach, and I won like 16 Super Bowls with him. So, you know, Peyton Manning would probably never take up coaching in real life. I... Uh, I had him as a head coach in one of these uh, old Madden games. I don't know if it was Madden 07 or 08. It was one of them. I don't think it was 09. 
It was probably 08 at latest. But yeah, that happened. So in the divisional round, we have the Colts, Pats, Seahawks, Redskins, Chargers, Ravens, Bucks, Packers. Let's see who makes the Super Bowl. Conference, Ravens, Pats, Packers, Redskins. The Patriots beat the Ravens 9 to nothing. I bet that was a really boring game to watch. But in the Super Bowl, we have the Redskins versus the Patriots. Eh. Kind of an odd duo to be in the Super Bowl together, if you ask me. Pats versus Redskins. Patriots. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see who wins. The Redskins won the Super Bowl 20-13. to Nice. Well, our divisional rival just won the, the Super Bowl. Fantastic. And it's the team that got the uh, the new name recently. The Commies. The Commanders. The Washington Commanders. The Washington Commies. If you want my opinion, I would have loved it if they actually picked the Washington Red Wolves. I mean, did they just avoid anything with red in it because they didn't want any regulation of their previous name? I mean, no matter what, that name is still going to be in the history books. Whether you call it them or not, it's still going to be there. I just don't understand the whole thing behind it. I mean, it was a name for the longest time, and no one ever had a problem with it until recent cancer culture bullshit. So, I don't know. I just, I just think the things are just clown world right now and it's just ridiculous in my opinion i mean it's a team name who cares i mean there's literally a a uh, high school i think it's a high school name in texas i think i figures it's texas that's literally named the cotton pickers it's like how can no one's furious about that how can no one's trying to like petition to change that name but I mean, yeah, that that's a terrible name. I would agree that that's a terrible name. I mean, that's more obvious than this, in my opinion. But, I don't know. And, and it's funny with the whole cancel culture thing. They, they seem to take off a lot of people of color off of brands. But they keep a lot of white people on brands. Like, why? I thought this was supposed to go against racism, but instead you're just... Taking black faces off of merchandises. But not the white faces. So only white faces are allowed on merchandise? Does, to me, that sounds racist, if anything. Like, what? But, whatever. Nothing makes sense anymore. We should all know that. Nothing makes sense. But yeah, I would have liked it if Washington was named the Washington Red Wolves. I might even root for them a little bit, or even like them. You don't know I'm an Eagles fan. I mean, I personally don't hate Washington. I hate the Giants more than I hate Washington, and I definitely hate the Cowboys more than anything else. So, yeah, that does it for this episode. We're going to be going over the off season, where we're hopefully going to be looking for a brand new offensive coordinator and maybe head coach, but definitely I'm going to be looking at a brand new offensive coordinator. Because I want this Darnay Green to develop. Because he has flashes of fantastic quarterback play. His, it's just that when his rookiness shows, it really shows. So I'm going to hope I'm going to get a better offense coordinator that can help develop him more. And we're going to be focusing probably more on the passing game than the running game. Unless there's a running back in the draft that I end up really liking, then we'll focus more on the run. But until then... Hope you all enjoyed, and don't mind my slight political rant there. I try not to do those so, so often. So, yeah, apologies for that. Hope you all have a good one, and I'll see you next time.